Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tuesday Tea with Leanne. So glad that uh, you could join us today. Um, things look a little bit different uh, as far as my little broadcast setup here as I've just obtained uh, StreamYard. So StreamYard is the uh, platform that you can use to uh, stream video like this to multiple platforms. And so that is what I'm doing right now is I'm streaming to uh, my Facebook page, my Facebook group and my YouTube channel. So uh, it's an experiment, of course, and who knows, I might uh, decide in time that this isn't the right tool for me. But um, so far, the experience on my end, the um, I guess the administration experience has been beautiful and I'm quite enjoying it so far. Uh, but we'll see, time will tell if this is something that I hang on to. Um, so it's a little bit of uh, a weather report from Kelowna, BC today. So I'm located in Kelowna, BC, which is about four hours uh, east of Vancouver. And we, our winters tend to be very mild. Uh, temperatures hovering around, you know, minus five to plus five uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, so around the 32 mark for uh, the American friends. Uh, but today it's minus 15. It's sunny. It's beautiful, but it is minus 15. So um, I kind of want to punch myself in the face because as a, uh, I lived, you know, most of my adult childhood and, and adult life in Alberta where, you know, minus 25, minus 30 was a regular uh, winter experience. And now at minus 15, I'm, I'm complaining. So I think I've gotten soft in my old age and definitely soft in the five years that we've lived here. Uh, Cause it's, I feel like it's bitter cool today, but it's not. So yes, my Ottawa friends and my Alberta friends, um, I'm sure you're rolling your eyes at me and with good reason. Uh, Cause you're right. It's not that cold here, but it sure feels cold for for us who live here and don't usually get these kinds of temperatures. Um, so a lot has been happening um, over in my business the last couple weeks. Uh, I've been doing uh, some speaking engagements, which has been uh, fantastic and really enjoying it. Uh, most of my speaking engagements right now are on LinkedIn, which is what we're going to talk about today. So it's kind of been a LinkedIn week, but didn't want um, the other social media platforms to feel left out. So I'm also working on some Facebook stuff, trying to learn Facebook ads. I uh, don't know if you've ever had experience with Facebook ads. If you have, I would love to hear your experience because it's a bear and I'm, I'm not <laughs> enjoying it. Um, but I'm going to, I am going to master Facebook ads by the end of this calendar year. And I'm going to know enough to be dangerous um, through February and through March. So that is definitely one of my big bucket goals. Uh, but like I said, most of my training has been around LinkedIn. And just coincidentally, today, we're talking a lot about LinkedIn. Um, it's a LinkedIn month over here at leannecollerwood.com. We have the LinkedIn challenge, which is a, a five-day challenge that starts on uh, each Monday in February, um, where you can um, challenge yourself to increase your network by 50 connections by the end of the week. And each day of the week, you're given a different task in the challenge and you're off to the races. Uh, and then my blog posts have all been around the LinkedIn theme. And what we're talking about today uh, is probably the meatiest of all the blog posts. And it's about how you can engage with the platform. Um, LinkedIn has 760 million users now. It just keeps on jumping up and up and up. Um, but of those 760 users, only really 3 million of them are active on a, um, a monthly basis, which is a really low amount um, which is really unfortunate because there's so much value in the platform. And I feel uh, if someone was cr created some intentional time on the platform and went into the platform with a bit more of a strategy, I think they would see the value uh, return to them, especially if you're in a B2B space. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, 
was really to compound on the blog post that I launched last week about how to build your personal brand on LinkedIn. And there's 10 different ways that you can do it. So I'm, I'm going to kind of jump into the 10 ways and would welcome your comments if you've tried these things, if you've tried these strategies and they've worked out for you in increasing your LinkedIn presence. Um, so the first one and probably the most important one is to complete your LinkedIn profile. Whatever activity you do on LinkedIn, the person who sees your engagement is going to check you out. Um, and it's not cyber stalking. This is what's done on this professional looking platform. But in checking you out, you need to ensure that they have something to read uh, and something to look at. So if you haven't taken time to complete your LinkedIn profile, um, that, that, that could be one of your goals for this quarter is to take some time and to update your LinkedIn profile. Um, the second thing that you can do, obviously, to build your brand is to start engaging by creating content. Um, so on your home feed, obviously, there's a few ways that you can do it. You can uh, create content with either just the written word uh, or with an image or with a short video. Um, all of them ha seem to have uh, their time and their place, but certainly anything with images and videos will get more attention than posts that, that lack those two components. And remember, these don't need to be professionally edited photos or edited videos by any stretch of the mean. Um, people are looking for authenticity, but they're also looking for that visual engagement along with your written work. So start to your hand at posting on a regular basis. LinkedIn, it's, it's recommended that you post no more than five times a week on LinkedIn, on your uh, personal profile. Um, so it's different from Twitter in that way where you can uh, post, you know, five or 10 times a day. Uh, on LinkedIn, the algorithm will favor five times a week. So once a day, once a business day is, is typically the, uh, the consistency that I would uh, suggest starting with. Now, if once a day is, is just too much of a task right now, especially if you're just starting out, um, my key piece of advice would be just be consistent. And if that means right now for you to post once a week, then start for once a week. Go for a couple months, see if you're still able to keep the schedule of once a week. And maybe at that time you wanna reevaluate and add another post per week. Um, so posting content obviously, and posting on a regular basis, again, not every single day, but on a consistent regular basis, will help build your brand on LinkedIn. Uh, there's also the LinkedIn messaging feature, which is on the top bar again, and that's when you can connect with other people in your network or maybe people outside your network. Um, and while the messaging feature is obviously a lot clunkier than your Outlook or your Gmail, it's a great place to start conversations with uh, network connections that you want to further the relationship with. I kind of look at LinkedIn messaging's goal as that's where you want to start the relationship. But the goal of that message is to eventually pull it off of LinkedIn and pull it into your own um, email service, uh, email service like Outlook or Gmail. So the relationships start on LinkedIn, but again, the goal of the relationship is to pull it out of messaging and put it on to your Outlook or Gmail where you can message more freely there. And of course, keep track of your messages uh, better because LinkedIn messaging is, is terribly clunky. Um, there's also a, a content feature on LinkedIn uh, called LinkedIn articles. So when you have the option to post on the home feed, it will ask you if you're going to post or if you'd prefer to just do an image or a video. And then there's an option to write an article. And these are the long form articles. So consider LinkedIn articles as uh, a blog platform. This is where you can, you know, spew off 400 words all the way up to however long you can. I don't even know the limit, actually, in LinkedIn articles. I can look into that. 
Um, but I think the longest article I did on there was roughly around 15 to 2,000 words, and, and there was no issue. Um, you can also insert images and videos in that long form article. Uh, and then you have the opportunity to provide a bit of an intro or an update to the article as you post it to your network. So the articling feature, again, is, is a commitment. Um, if you can do one article a month, and again, the goal is to stay consistent, um, that's something that would definitely grow your brand on LinkedIn. Um, and here's one of my little backdoor strategies with articles, is if you write a really great, compelling article on LinkedIn, you can feature that in your featured section, which is on your profile. So the featured section falls right below the about section. Um, not everyone has the featured section, but if you have the featured section, you can create one of your features as your LinkedIn article. So there's the little hack about if you write a blog article, it can live not only in your activity, but it can live in your featured section, which when people visit your profile, they'll see that you've created this article and they may take a read of it. So um, that's a really compelling one, really great uh, uh tool in your toolbox for growing your personal brand and getting eyes on your content. The other way uh, you can grow your brand is to jump into groups. Another very clunky feature of LinkedIn is LinkedIn groups. Um, it's not the most well laid out uh, feature of LinkedIn for sure. And there are not a ton of people providing valuable insights in groups. But if you find the right group and there's actual valuable content in there, jump in, get engaged, see who else is creating and providing great insights and content and start to build your network um, inside of groups. Um, again, it's a great way to build your brand because you can provide value in groups. The, the rule of groups though is to stay away from self-promotion and of course spam. Um, so if you can follow those rules, everything else, you can post discussion questions, you can post uh, tips and tricks, best practices. Uh, you can look for advice on certain things. So there's a lot of things that you can do inside of a Facebook or a LinkedIn group, sorry, um, to build your brand. Just got to find the right group where there's some engagement there. Um, all right, so we are on to number seven already, and another rarely used feature are hashtags. So including some hashtags in your content and following discussions, um, discussion topics through hashtags is a great way to get industry intel. Uh, it's a great way to learn who's talking about those topics. Uh, you'll need to do some research when you start getting into hashtags to see what hashtags people are actually following. Um, and you can use the search bar to do that research and, and find out how many people are following different hashtags and use different variations of a hashtag. In fact, the other day I was doing um, some filming for a course I'm launching and the example was administrative assistance. And so I was doing some hashtag research around administrative assistance. And I was finding that administrative professionals was actually the more popular hashtag, um, literally by tens of thousands of people. So take some variations of different hashtags that you'd be looking for and, and see which ones pop up as being more popular than others. Um, the eighth tip is to ensure that you go into your settings and set your profile to full and public. I, I believe there was a misconception back in the day that LinkedIn was um, not a platform where you invited everyone into your world, similar to Facebook. And so a lot of us have settings um, blocking people from seeing our last name or even blocking people from seeing our profile picture. Um, but LinkedIn is so, so different from Facebook and Instagram because it is the business platform. And if you're growing your brand, you obviously want to invite people into your business world. So ensure that your settings allow for that. And if you haven't checked out your settings in a while, it might be time just to ensure that they are set to full. 
Um, in fact, I've seen some incredible brands on LinkedIn, um, but I couldn't see their profile picture and it took me forever to figure out why they were doing such great video, but didn't have uh, a profile picture up on their profile. So I finally brought it to their attention that that, is, that was what was happening uh, so that they could change their settings. Um, the ninth thing that you can do is obviously to grow your network through connections. And of course, the more connections you have, the more intentional connections you have, the more eyes you'll have on your content. Uh, and those people obviously can engage with your content. And um, it, it just opens doors to opportunities as, of course, they see you continuing to uh, promote your brand and promote um, valuable content on LinkedIn. I mentioned the five days to 50 connections challenge. Uh, there's a bunch of people going through it right now and hopefully some more uh, go through it next week. Next week is the last week of the challenge. And then I'm going to retire the challenge for the season. So if you're interested in growing your connections, five days to 50 LinkedIn connections challenge, you can find more information about that over at leannecalderwood.com forward slash challenge, and you can get ready for next Monday's challenge. Uh, the last tip I want to leave you with today, and to be honest, this is my favorite, is to continually update your profile. And you can update a few sections in a few different ways that keep it fresh Keep it visually engaging for those who visit your profile and always give something, someone something new to read. And there's three areas that I think you can do this uh, regularly, and that is your banner. So the banner is the big block behind your head uh, on your LinkedIn profile. Um, creating visuals or creating calls to action on your banner, including once we get back to Attending conferences and speaking at conferences, putting those things in a banner is a great visual hook for people. Uh, the second place is your headline, which is kind of that, that prominent statement right below your name. Um, you can update that as well. I used to update it when I was attending conferences and letting people know what cities or what conferences I was going to be at. And I, I look forward to doing that again someday. And of course, the third thing is your featured section. So that's that uh, Rolodex of different things that you want to feature about your work and your brand. I mentioned that you could tag one of your articles as part of your featured section, uh, but you also may want to tag some videos that you've created uh, other websites, maybe a PDF that you've created or a PDF about your business. So capitalizing on your featured section and keeping content rolling through that little carousel of featured content is a great way to keep your up your content and your profile continually fresh um, through those updates. So those are 10 very quick ways that you can capitalize on your brand using LinkedIn Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about LinkedIn groups. Uh, I mentioned LinkedIn groups today. It is a clunky, clunky uh, feature, um, but I think there's some things that we can all try to capitalize on LinkedIn groups. And so we're going to look at that next week. Thank you for joining today's broadcast. If you have any questions at all, um, certainly let me know through the, the Facebook uh, or YouTube comments. And I do hope to see you next Tuesday for tea, same time, same place. Bye for now.